Hi, I'm Tasaya with WSOU, and I am here with Mark Mengi from Metal Allegiance. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good, too. Thank you. Uh, we're going to get right into it. Um, part of the reason you're literally interviewing with WSOU is you guys are coming here to the East Coast uh, in September, September 6th, for your 10th anniversary show. How has that been going? Good. You know, I would say three quarters of us are here already because we all live here. And, oh and, yeah. And the try a few so there's three three guys traveling east. That would be John Bush, mm-hmm. Tro, uh Troy from Mastodon. He's actually coming north. And um Dave Elfson, he's coming east as well. But Alex, he lives in Brooklyn. Uh Mike Portnoy, he lives in Pennsylvania. And myself, I live in uh New York on Long Island. Oh yeah, you it is your home show, I guess, as you say. Technically, it's a it's a hometown show. Really? Like, are you from uh, Sireville? I am not, but Jersey's close enough. I guess so. But um, you know, it's been a it's been a while. August, I believe, makes ten years. It is well, August, right? Yeah. August, the end of August would make officially. 10 years yeah was it end of august into september i forgot when motorboat was it could have been september yeah i think it was august into september was when motorhead's motorboat was then we were first i guess active if you will um so yeah so it's around the one year mark of our first shows um if if not on the date it's it's pretty close it was it was very last minute um you know megadeth was scheduled to be on that on that cruise ship and it was i believe it was early august you know metal allegiance was a thing we were going to do um it was planned for the following year and then that's when dave said we have an opportunity here to you know to quote unquote get the band back together and um under some miracle i still don't know how the hell we pulled it off but we did um and yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Literally, a, maybe a month, month and a half at at most, we had to prep for this. Um, yeah. And we and at that time, we had nothing. There was no, you know, we had a name, but there was no <laughs> website, no social media, no logo, no band members, no songs, no record label, no nothing. Literally nothing. And um, here we are, ten years later. Yeah. Although you had a lot more time to prepare for this show, I assume. Yeah. Well. We started planning, you know, we knew last year we were only going to do a select amount of shows. Everyone, we're all so busy. Mm -hmm. Um, So getting us together is a feat in itself. Um, But we also knew we wanted to do Anaheim, which we did this past January, which was awesome. And we really wanted to do a a tri-state area gig. Super important to us um, to do something closer to home where MA started um and we've never played jersey before you know as really? met, as metal allegiance we have never played jersey which is crazy to think about and when going over show dates and, and venues and ideas it was like you know starland would be awesome that would be a fun gig yeah. um we've never done it as ma we've all played there in other outfits and in, in, in different areas but um where it's going to be a fun gig Oh, well, that's good. How has the preparations for that been going? Like, We really just started. You know, we just announced the show um, this past Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, tickets go on sale, I believe, this Friday, um, which is yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, Friday. Tomorrow, Friday. Friday. Uh, June 7th, yeah. June yeah. 7th. Um, so we're really just kind of starting to talk, figure out what we're going to do, who we're going to bring in, special guests, because if you know MA shows, we're always throwing up different people who are not advertised. <laughs> um, and it's usually pretty cool when we do it. Um, so, yeah, we're starting to get the, get that all together to figure out what we're going to do. It's a little early, but could you, like, maybe give a little bit of a peek? I'm not sure what you're allowed to say, but. <laughs> well, fortunately, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Um, oh. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't, you know, I can't, I can't dive in. That takes away from the fun of it. Um, That's fair. You know, it's, it's the fun of, we we do have guests planned as of right now. Um, But again, you you never know schedules. You know, we're still, we're still so far in in advance right now. 
if you were to ask me that question, say in August, I would probably have a definitive answer I'd give you. Um, but I just don't want to spoil anything. That's all. Are you saying I can ask that question again in August? I'll type up my email. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, but you were talking about the um lineup. Obviously, you're not going to spoil who the surprise lineup for this is or who the set announced lineup is. But um, I was really interested, especially because. Metal Allegiance being a super group made of just a bunch of greats in the metal community. If you could add anybody to Metal Allegiance, past and present, who would you add and why? Well, I, I've been asked this question pretty regularly over the last 10 years, and I give the same answer. I don't think my answer has ever changed, and I'm glad this question is asked because one day I'm hoping the person I'm about to say is sick of me saying his name. Um, that would be James Hetfield okay. um, for Metallica. For me, and that's for me on a personal. Um, okay. I think that would be awesome. You know, uh, it, it would for me. You know, he's one of my personal uh, musician heroes. So it would be you know I, with we have a pretty strong connection with the Metallica camp. You know, Cliff Burton. Mm -hmm. Cliff Burton's family uh, are big supporters of MA. You know, I, I've had the um, the honor to know Ray Burton towards the later part of his life, and um, which is awesome. He's he has come to shows and MA shows. He's let me play Cliff bass live, which is crazy. Um, you know, obviously Dave Elson. He goes way, way, way back from day one with the whole Megadeth Metallica thing. Um, yeah. You know, so we, we all have our relationships with those guys. So for me, James, I know um, if you ask Dave, he's going to have a different answer. If Michael have a different answer and Alex will have a different answer. Oh, that would be a fun like tour of just uh, artist choice of yeah, right. Metal Allegiance choice. But, you know, I feel like maybe maybe James is spiting you. He just wants you to keep saying his name every time you get uh -huh, asked that question. You know. He, he he can't spite me all he want you know he <laughs> he has every right and he he's earned that and they're busy i mean metallica's busy they're, oh, they're yeah busy. yeah but um we have a lot of like newer listeners to metal um i know a lot of personal staff members actually at wsu who weren't metal heads but became them during the um course of their like time so just a question for the newer metalheads. Like, how would you describe Metal Allegiance to people who don't know you guys? It's weird. We, we, we're we're kind of there, there's two avenues of of uh, of MA. There's the recording aspect. We do have records and original music. We have two full length <laughs> records, um, and then we have the live band. You know, and sometimes they cross pollinate. Sometimes they go completely different. You know, they're one's in one lane, one stays in the other lane. You know, so with MA, you get a tight. You know, with a lot of these super groups or all star jams or or whatnot, um, it could go astray sometimes. It could be a lot of dead time between songs on a live gig. It could be, you know, invite all of our friends up. You know, with MA, we, we really take pride in planning our shows. And if you've ever seen an MA show, I mean, it's 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 like clockwork. You know, it's, it's you know, we have a great crew um, all, and it doesn't work without them. I mean, they they what they do is, is mind blowing. You know, so we, we really try to make it a concert band experience. And then on the flip side, you have myself, Alex, Mike and Dave, who are the quote unquote core four, as they call us. Um, where the recording entity of that, you know, we write and record all the music and then we bring in our friends to guests and we translate that to the stage. So with our shows at this point in time, you're getting a lot more original music than covers. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely at the very least 50, 50, if not 60, 40. Um, it depends on the gig. It depends on the circumstance as well. You know, okay. and there's also been times that, We'll say, you know what, let's let's cover the first Black Sabbath record in its entirety. And we'll go and do that off the whim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, you know, we, we kind of go all over the place, but that, that's what makes MA fun. Yeah. But you were talking about how um you have both your covers and your um original songs. 
and you can't tell me which one you're excited to perform because that would spoil the set list but like just in general like say one original and one cover like what song is it's like oh i really always want to perform this these songs well an ma for an ma original music is probably the accuser which mm-hmm. is the uh, is that the first track on our second yeah it's the first track on uh power drunk majesty our second record so definitely the accuser and that has more meaning now just because um trevor from black dahlia murder sang on that and he's no longer with us yeah. um and he was a close friend of mine just a great dude um and it's just it's you know we play you know the first time we played that without him and when he passed because he's played that song with us live as well mm-hmm. um so when the first time we did it it was like should we do it you know and uh. we did it and every time we play it i just and every time I'm playing, I just kind of black out and I just start thinking about funny Trev stories. It makes me, I mean, it makes me laugh, makes me happy. So definitely the accuser will probably always stay in the set list no matter what. Um, and then on the cover side, I would probably say, you know, the last gig we did Metallica's Damage Incorporated. That mm-hmm. that was fun. More I Metallica mean, love. <laughs> well, no, the, the place almost got destroyed when we kicked oh. into that. I mean, Chuck Billy singing. Um, we had a three guitar attack up there, I believe. And it, it was, I mean, it was, I thought the place was about to get ripped down. So that was pretty cool to see that. Has a place ever gotten ripped down at a Metal Legion show? Film, the Fillmore in San Francisco when we played there. I mean, I, I was watching bodies fly, chairs fly, um, things thrown, objects thrown, um, which was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so uh <laughs> you know so that was the closest i've seen to a venue getting pretty pretty rowdy okay well talking about like your other shows like obviously this is a it's been a while since you've come back to new jersey and the east coast in general like from touring or touring and just like shows then to how it's going now like how's that difference been well, for MA, it's not really a big difference because we were always sporadic what we did. We never took it fully on the road. We would do a week or two tours here and there. Um, you know, the last proper tour we did was the five-year anniversary where we did a tour. Um, and that was more so on the West Coast. We didn't even do any, we didn't touch the East Coast. The la- you know, and then after that, we played Midwest dates, um, you know, we haven't played the New York area probably since 2018, 19. It was definitely pre-pandemic, that I know. Um, actually, I lie. We did 2021 on Long Island. That just hit me. Ah. <laughs> um, I lie. but And that was different. Uh, masks. And that was like right at, you know, it was right during the, 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 the COVID experience. And yeah. it was weird not being able to see our friends and our family. Um, backstage and whatnot but this is the f- first time we're opening it where we could we're doing it proper so like back to normal for you this back is normal. your back yeah. to normal. would you act would ma ever like considered actually touring again like full like maybe if the stars aligned with all of your schedules yeah i mean we would love to if the stars align the problem is the stars don't seem to align too often um that's just reality yeah yeah and uh you know the one thing is we keep seeing is are you gonna do another record are you gonna do another record new music another record new music and we live in a different world than we did you know those years ago when we we were making records so Mm -hmm. um will we i don't know you know do we want to absolutely you know, it just comes down to timing and, um, you know, and see, especially seeing how this goes. And, you know, even with Dave, you know, last, this past January was his first shows back with us in quite a while. You know, um, and it's, it was all about, you know, we haven't seen each other in so long, the four of us. The four of us haven't been in the same room together in six years. You know, so it was just seeing how things were personally where we, you know, then we got, obviously that's why we're doing this. We, I mean, it was like nothing ever <laughs> happened, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. 
you're talking about the different worlds like all of you have been in the metal industry for so long and just music in general where you actually talked about being burnt out at one point in time but like yeah. how is the how has it been seeing like the whole change for being in the industry for that long it's it's you have to have a certain makeup to withstand this world you know you need to silence the haters or you need to learn how to silence them um and you need to you, you need to understand what it takes to to achieve success in this world you know it's it's not easy i mean even for newer younger bands it, it's not easy you know especially now with content creation and, and youtubers and tiktoks instagram reels and everyone just creating videos from their bedroom which is awesome and they found a living doing that which is great you know it's it's a different world today than what, when it was when i was coming up you know i would throw my shit the back of a car and off we went Hit every bar club and you know thing we could think of up and down the east coast when i was a kid growing up yeah. that's how we did it you don't need to do that today now it comes down to views likes and and um shares mm. you know so um it's tough and and it's probably tougher today because you could see all the commentary. You could read it. Yeah. Positive or negative. It's there. Black and white for you to see. So you need to have a certain mental makeup to to withstand that, I believe. Um, at least that's my opinion. You know, again, back in the day, if you suck, somebody would throw a beer bottle at you, you would settle your differences, and that was that. Today it's a little <laughs> you know, today it's a little bit different. And, you get a beer uh, bottle thrown at you? Oh, I had all kinds of things thrown at me, you know, that, but that was back then, you know, um, and that's what makes you, in my opinion, you know, hitting that, hitting the road with your friends and your buddies and, and doing it day in, day out, you know, loading your own gear up into a, a back of a car or a pickup and, and just, and going, you know, to me, that's, at least that's where my experience came from. And, um, and I wish I had the talent some of these content creators had because it's it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing seeing what these musicians could do. I mean, it's it's insane. And I and I'll send them to Mike or Alex, and I'll go, dude, you see? Check this out. This guy's just fucking going to town right now, and um, it, it's pretty cool. So there's like you're saying that there's some uh, like uppercomers that you're like looking at that. If the stars oh, aligned, you'd add to Metal Allegiance? 100%. Absolutely. I don't know if I can ask who they are. Why not? Who? Oh, there's a, name, there's a, let's name there's some a, names. There's a dozen or so, right? I can just think off, off the top of my head that are, you know, that are, I guess, what do you call them? Content creators? That's what they do? Sure, yeah. Right? They're unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable musicians. That's that's so cool. I'm sure they would love to hear from you. Maybe you're their James from Metallica. I don't know about that. I can't do half what they do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, you've you've been in the music industry for a long time. You have seen what there is to see. And if you had picked a different path, like what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't in deep in music right now? Oh, probably be locked up right now no i'm joking uh okay. no i'm joking um you know i'm not sure i'm doing everything i love to do you know i went to college i have my degrees you know I, what, I was still, your, what was your college major uh visual communications so oh i, have, <laughs> I don't know what yeah. that is uh it's basically it's visual communications is a counterpart of an art, not an art degree, but graphic design, anything visual. Oh, okay, okay. So all that cool MA artwork you see. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, myself with a few other collaborator collaborators, but um, you know, I still do that. Right? I still do a lot of that work, and I love it just because I love to do it. Yeah, you know, so that's outside of music, and then uh, on the music end of things, you know, I'm busier than I've ever been doing a lot of session work, a whole lot more than I even know. I mean, it's insane. Um, did a bunch of tour dates with Joe Satriani, played bass with him. Um, you know, so it's, just, it's, it's busy. No, that's cool though. Like still using what you wanted to, or what you thought you wanted to do, I guess in college. 
No, I still do it. Yeah, to this day. But, I mean, you were talking about back in your day. I assume this was before college where you were still touring with the band. So, like, and during. was that? Yeah. Oh, during, too. Before, during, and after. How long, like, how long, for how long was that the plan, I guess? Like, was, music I'm is what I'm going to do. When I graduated college, I realized that the lot you know, being a musician probably was never going to work out. Mm-hmm. And I got a real job in the corporate world, in the music industry. Um, you know, worked in the business side of things for a while. Um, I went backwards in life, actually, if you think about it. You know, uh-huh. and then 2014 came. You know, I was burnt, burnt out, and then all of a sudden, I'm a musician again. You know, and that's when MA started, and, and here we are. So usually that happens before. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for me, I went to the whole business side first for all those years after college, and um, and now I do both. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about the business side? Like, not like especially the current musicians. Some of them like might not ever see the business side of things, just with how they have gotten their start. Like, do you think that's beneficial? It's a tough place to navigate now. Again, like I spoke about with content creation, everything in the music business is all about content creation. Yeah, It's all about likes, shares, and views. That's it. If you know you don't have the likes, shares, or views, it's not successful. Or it's not mm-hmm. deemed. I should say it's not deemed successful. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the music business today. It, it's just, and, and just to boil it down, and that goes for artists, musicians, bands, whomever you are. If your social media presence is not good, um, it's hard for a record label, um, you know, musical instrument business. That's where I'm from. You know, it, it, it's tough to justify. It, it's very difficult. In the musical instrument business, what instrument? Or just in general? In general, companies like Fender, Gibson. Ah. Oh, okay. Well, that's just cool, though. Like, going from... Like you said, going the opposite way. Like you don't see that many people doing that. Yeah, and I'm fortunate I get to do both. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, like you said, it's ten years since Metal Allegiance, and more than ten years for your general experience with music. Like you talked about being burnt out in the past, but like, what kept you going for so long? You know, back in 2014. It was 110 miles per hour full bore up until that point. Mm -hmm. Hence the burnout. That summer, when I just kind of put myself into a timeout, you know, I really, I really had, you know, I I really took a a look and I went to, you know, if I have two children, I was like, do I want, at that time, they were very young. Do I want to be a dad or do I want to be, whether, you know, a successful businessman in, in the music industry. And I chose the latter. I didn't want to be a dad. I wanted to be with my kids. Uh, so everything else went in, into the back burner. And that's when Dave called. And, you know, I found a, a happy medium to do both, you know, to, you know, keep my passion, keep what I wanted to do, but yet carry on within the music side of things. And, you know, I, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, and it was around this time where MA was kind of formulated, Mm-hmm. was early summer of that year i would have laughed if you think we'd be here 10 years later <laughs> with you know all these records and shows and, and everything else that we did i mean that was not the goal that wasn't even a thought so like metal allegiance like at first was just haha what if we did this yeah that's exactly <laughs> what it was honestly i think we all enjoy when jokes end up as a yeah established thing Hey, but... MA's changed my life for the better, you know, and I'm I'm grateful for that. You know, you know, Mike, Alex, and Dave certainly didn't need to include me in the writing portion of things. Mm-hmm. Um, they saw something in me I didn't even see. Um, because I didn't want to do it. I said no like ten times. And uh, you know, Dave kind of reeled me in and Portnoy was just like on me. He was relentless. He was like, dude, you know, you got to do this, got to do it. And, you got um, peer pressured into Metal Allegiance? Well, they saw something, like I said, they saw something I didn't see. Mm. You know, and I'm, I'm my own worst critic, when it, especially mm. when it comes to, to writing and, and music and, and playing and all that. Well, that's cool. Um, we're, I think we're 
hitting about our ending time. I know they asked it to kind of keep this one short. So just for one last question, what's something about you that nobody would guess? I I listen to a lot of non-metal music. Okay. Like like what genres? Go on. All genres. Love R and B. Love soul. Love hip hop. Right. Love jazz. Love blues. Um, you know, Alex always makes fun of me. I love yacht rock. Like <laughs> I'll put on a yacht rock station. I can listen I to mean, that. I mean, your first show was on a boat. Like yeah, yeah. So it was um, fate. You know, Steely Dan, Fleetwood Mac, James Brown, Stevie Wonder, oh. Stevie King. I mean, you know, anything Motown related, I'm obsessed. Mm. <laughs> you so. literally just named a bunch of our um, WSOU specialty shows. It, it, it's but that's what pe people automatically think it's metal, 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 metal. But mm -hmm. in reality, you know, it's the, you know, if you look at like the Sirius XM playlist or my my FM playlist in my in my truck, uh -huh. you know, it's Yacht Rock Radio, Beatles Radio, SOU. I, I do have on there. Um, you know, it, it's just probably you know people go interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Now I want to see this. I want to see this song sound log now. I'm curious. Although granted, you just told me everything, but I need photo evidence. Not really, but um, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, interviewing with us today and with I appreciate me today. It. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we see you guys at the gig.